worthy to be paid. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you, my brothers and sisters. We praise God for another day and for another chance to worship him uh, on another Sunday morning. We praise God for you. We're so glad that you uh, have decided to join in this worship experience with us here at the Flat Rock African Methodist Episcopal Church in the Antrieville community of Abbeville, South Carolina. We welcome you. We pray that you, we know you've had a blessed week because you're here right now. We pray you've had an enjoyable week. And we thank God for each and every one of you. We are ready to begin our worship experience. So this time we're going to start with a word of prayer. Let us pray together. <clears throat> oh God, we come to you now giving you thanks for another day. We come glorifying your name because you are good. You are great and you are worthy to be praised. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see the beginning of this day. For this day is the day that you have made, and we are rejoicing and we are glad in it. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who is our Savior and our Redeemer. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, who is our comforter and our guide. We thank you, Lord, for every blessing, great, small, seen, and unseen. We declare this morning, Lord, that you are good. Now, Lord, we come thanking you for this worship experience. Lord, even in a pandemic when we are socially distanced, we are still spiritually connected to you and even to one another. So now, Lord, even during this virtual worship experience, we pray that your Holy Spirit would move mightily, not just here in the sanctuary, but in our homes or wherever we are uh, joining in this worship experience. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will move there. Fill us, oh God, we pray. Touch our hearts and our minds that all that we say and all that we do will bring honor and glory to your name. So fill us, Holy Spirit. Use us now, God, to your benefit, to your advantage and to the benefit of your people. And Lord, we pray that everything that is done in this service will bring honor and glory to your name. So now, we ask your blessings upon every prayer that is prayed, upon uh, the, 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 the singing, upon the reading of your word, the preaching of your word. Move, Holy Spirit, we pray. Have your way, O oh God, in us and through us, and let your name be glorified. We pray this prayer in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. At this time, we have a selection from the choir.
Thank you, choir, for allowing God to use you in singing, lifting his name through song this morning in this worship experience. This morning, I want to call your attention to 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verses 7 through 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 7, reading through verse 10. And there we find these words. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. For the next few minutes, we ask that you would pray with us and pray for us. I want to speak to you this morning from the subject, prayer denied, but grace supplied. Prayer denied but grace supplied. One of the first things that I was taught as, as a child was learning about the Lord and many of you also is that God answers prayers uh, each night. Of course, I remember, and many of you may remember your parents uh, teaching you to kneel down by the bed and pray. And, and while you're praying, you pray, we would first learn now I lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And then as I grew and got older, we learned, we learned the Lord's Prayer. And we prayed the Lord's Prayer every night. And then after that, after a while, we would pray the Lord's Prayer and then added on my own petitions before the Lord. And I learned to grow, and that is how many of us learn how to pray. And and one of the things that we learned after praying was that when you pray, God hears your prayer and God will answer your prayer. And that's a wonderful thing. And I praise God that even today, God still hears prayers and God still answers prayers. But one of the things that I had to learn as I grew in the Lord and as I grew and matured as a human being was that God does not always give you what you ask for in your prayers. And that is a shock to some people. And it bothers me that you have some who believe that if I just pray and ask for it, God is going to give it to me. Now, I do believe that having, you can have faith and ask God for anything that you want. But if it's not in his will, it is not for you. And so it, it, what do we do when we teach people to pray and to call on his name? And we, we teach God, we teach the song that says, just keep on praying for the Lord is nigh. Just keep on praying. He'll hear your cry. For the Lord has promised his word is true. Just keep on praying and he'll answer you. I, I thought when I learned that song, when I would hear that song in church as a, as a little boy, I thought it meant that if you kept on praying, eventually God would give you what you wanted. And I can tell you that there are times that is true. There are times that God will give you what you want if you keep on praying and trusting in him. But what happens when I've prayed and I've prayed and I've prayed and it has not come yet? What happens? Do I keep on praying? Yes, it's good to keep on praying because, yes, and I believe there are some people who are witnesses who are part of this service now who say that I prayed a long time and, and eventually God did answer my prayer. God blessed me with what I asked for, what I prayed for. That's a wonderful thing. But what happens when God says no? We, 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 many times we're not prepared for that. We don't think about uh, what happens when God does not? What happens when, when what we ask for does not align with his will? What happens when we have prayed and what we prayed for did not come to pass? Well, my brothers and sisters, first and foremost, we must understand that even when God says no, it still does not mean he's not good and it does not mean he does not love us. 
Uh, any of us who are part of this call now, uh, who've ever dealt with children, whether it be your, your own children or grandchildren or nieces or nephews or even children that you may have worked with in church, understand that sometimes you have to tell them no, even when they ask nicely. Even when they're sweet, you have to say no, because sometimes they have to learn that they cannot get everything they want when we want it. I believe it was the late Gardner, Reverend Dr. Gardner C. Taylor, who said one time that, uh, he said that we, we, we are bad enough already. We, we, we could you imagine if God gave us everything we wanted? If God gave us everything we wanted, we'd be out of control. But sometimes God says no, not because he does not love us and not because he's not good, but because his no means he has something else for us. And so with that in mind, I, I wonder how many of us could still and how many of us still trust God and still love God and can still worship God when God says no to our request. Well, what, can we still love God? Can we still worship God when we don't get what we asked for, when he didn't come through like we wanted him to? Can we still love and worship God? I'm reminded of in the Old Testament when, when the Hebrew boys Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were put in the fire, before they were put in the fire furnace where they told Nebuchadnezzar, they said, if you put us in the furnace, our God is able to bring us out. But if he does not bring us out, he is still good and worthy to be praised. Is there anybody who has a but if not worship this morning? You say, that, yeah, I pray and I want God to do it. But if God does not do it, I still know he's God and I'm still going to be faithful to him. Well, my brothers and sisters here in the text this morning, we find the apostle Paul. Paul who wrote over half of the New Testament. Paul who planted churches all over the world. Plant Trump, Paul. Paul whose name was changed from Saul after being knocked off the horse to the road to Damascus. Paul, who, who tells us how to live go holy and righteous. Paul, who gives us sound theology, now finds himself admitting that there are times you pray that God didn't give you what you want. Here in the text, we find Paul writing his letter to the church at Corinth, his second letter to the church at Corinth. And when Paul writes this letter, Paul starts off by sharing some things with them. He lets them know that he, there's a time 14 years ago when there, there, there's a man, and we don't know if this man was Paul or not, but he said, I knew a man who 14 years prior uh, had an out-of-body experience, if you will, where he, he was caught up in the third heaven, where he started to feel, he was filled with the glory of God, and he saw God's glory, and because of that, he could not help but to worship God. I wonder how many of us have ever had a time when God, we were caught up in the Holy Spirit, and God showed us things, and we could see God's glory and God's moving all around with, and, and understand that you don't know when it's going to happen, and you don't know how it's going to happen but all of us who are who love the Lord and who are saved and who are filled by the Holy Spirit ought to have a time every now and then where God takes you up a little bit higher I, I, and doesn't have to happen in church all the time you can be minding your business you can be at work or at home you can be wherever you are and God will sometimes take you up and show you things he'll show you his glory and you can't help but to worship him is there anybody who's a part of this service this morning who can say I know what you're talking about preacher because every now and then the Lord picks me up the Lord takes me a little bit higher the Lord shows me his glory here we find Paul now he is writing this letter and he tells them after in verse number seven he says that uh, because of what I have seen Paul was a gifted man he, he was Holy Ghost filled he he loved the Lord and the Lord loved him uh, he, he served the Lord he, he was an anointed man and yet, he says, for all that I've done, he, he says that I, I love God. But Paul lets it be known in verse number seven that although I love God, and yes, I could be full of myself, and I could brag on who I am and what I've done, and how, how God uses me, but I can't do it. Because he says in verse seven, the Lord gave me a thorn in my flesh. Paul never says what the thorn is. He never tells us what has caused it. He just lets it be known. The Lord gave me a thorn in my flesh. And then here's the thing. Paul said, I prayed three times for the Lord to take the thorn from my flesh. Now, we don't know what the thorn was. There are some who, who who'd like to uh, uh, who wonder rather if maybe it was Paul having migraine headaches because he had problems with his vision, but, but we don't know. All we know is he had a thorn in the flesh. And, and he prays for God to remove the thorn. 
Because that is what we're taught to do. And that is the right thing to do. Pray for it. But in this case, Paul prays and God says no. Paul lets it be known that God, in verse 7, he says that God gave me the thorn to keep me humble. And have you ever thought about the fact that maybe some of the struggles we have are God's way of keeping us humble? Keeping us on our knees before him? Because understand that many of us, if we got everything we wanted, we'd be full of ourselves and we would think that we did it ourselves. So sometimes God said, allows just enough trouble to come just to keep us humble. I believe it was the late President Abraham Lincoln who said that there have been times I've been driven to my knees because I had no place else to go. My brothers and sisters, sometimes God will allow situations to come into our lives to drive us to our praying ground so that we will remember him and we will remember we need him because if he gave us everything we wanted, we'd be a bunch of spoiled, bratty Christians. But God sometimes allows things to come to remind us that we need him and remind us to call on his name. Oh, here, Paul says, I prayed three times. And, then, and, and, and God says, no. I prayed three times, Paul says. Remove this thorn from my flesh. And God says, no. God doesn't do it. My brothers and sisters, there are some things in life, some troubles in life, some illnesses in life, we just have to learn to live with. God won't take everything away. Sometimes we got to learn to adjust and live with some stuff. And what does Paul say? He says that God said no. But the good news is when God says no, that doesn't mean he will let you leave him empty handed. Paul came looking for a miracle. Paul came looking for a healing, but he didn't get, he get a healing. Paul got something else. For God says what? No, I'm not going to take the thorn away. But I tell you, I'm going to deny your prayer, but I'm going to supply you with my grace. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I thank God for grace. He says, Paul, God tells Paul, my grace is sufficient. In other words, my grace is all you need. And this morning, my brothers and sisters, God would just have us to know all we need is his grace. Uh, all we need is his grace to carry us through. You can pray and, and, and it's good to pray. And we hope and trust that God will move in your favor. But if he doesn't do it like you want him to, can you still say, God, I thank you for grace. Uh, there are some of us who prayed for things before and God didn't do it like we asked him to, but we are still here by his grace. There are times we prayed for God to take away the medical condition and he did not do it, but we are still here by his grace. There are times we prayed for God to supply that financial blessing and he didn't give it like we asked him to but by him by, but we are still here by his grace as a matter of fact all of us ought to thank God this morning for his grace because even if he didn't do it like we asked him to if he even if he didn't move like we prescribed we still say God thank you for your grace because his grace will carry us through. Is there anybody here this morning that knows anything about God's sustaining grace? That grace that keeps us and carries us when we cannot carry ourselves? Is there anybody here this morning that can see God, I thank you. And I'm a witness that your grace is amazing. Mm. And then Paul ends verse 10 in this passage by saying that now when trouble comes, I tell you, I give God glory. Because I know his grace is going to come. And Paul said, I've learned now that when I'm at my weakest, God is at his best. And when God is at his best, even if I don't feel it, I'm at my strongest. Is there, any, is there a witness here this morning that can see I've had weak moments, but I thank God that at my weakest, God carried me. That when I couldn't do it, God lifted me. That when I couldn't carry myself, God scooped me up and carried me through my troubles. And as a matter of fact, God is carrying me right now. And I say thank you. So I know now what the songwriter and the hymn writer meant when he said, I am weak and I need thy strength and power to help me over my weakest hour. Lead me through the darkness that I face to see. Lead me, oh Lord, lead me. I thank God we, that when I'm at my weakest and when I feel like I'm at my lowest, I've got a God who carries me. And it is now that I know how good he is. I shared with you all uh, several weeks ago the poem by Robert Browning that said, I walked a mile with happiness and she chatted along the way, but she left me none the wiser with what she had to say. But then I walked a mile with sorrow and not a word 
heard uttered she, but all oh, the lessons I learned that day as sorrow walked with me. My brothers and sisters, I thank God for my troubles. I thank God for the trials I've already come through because it's because of that that I've learned that even when God says no, he gives me his grace. My prayer might be denied, but his grace will be supplied. My brothers and sisters, maybe you know nothing about this Christ that Paul was talking about. This Christ that gives us grace, this Christ that, that helps to carry and bear and carry our burdens, that sustains us in our weakest moments. He's also the same Christ that died to forgive us of our sins so that we might be saved. This morning, we offer you the salvation that only comes through the name of Jesus the Christ. The Bible makes it clear in Acts chapter 4 that there is no other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus. We offer you Jesus this morning. We, he is still the King of Kings. He's still the Lord of Lords. He's still the Redeemer of the universe. And he's still able to save you from your sins. Maybe you're saved, but... You need to renew your covenant with the Lord. We invite you to come and recommit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Reestablish his place in your life. Uh, perhaps you just, like Paul, you've been praying and you just want someone to pray with you and for you. We invite you to contact us. Uh, we would love to pray with you. We'd love to pray for you. We, uh, if you don't have a church home, we would love to have you here at Flat Rock, whether it be as a full member or an affiliate member. Our doors stand wide open. We welcome you to come. Be a part of this ministry. Be a part of this fellowship. Come work with us. Come learn with us. Come grow with us. Come worship with us. Come share with us. We invite you to be a part of the Flat Rock Church family. If you desire any of these, we invite you to email us. Our email address on your screen right now. Uh, if you email us, we, we can pray the prayer of salvation with you. We can uh, help you in your recommitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. We can pray with you. Or we can receive you as a member of Flat Rock. We just uh, invite you to email us, leave us your information, and we will contact you. Uh, we invite you also to be a part of our Bible study group. We meet every Wednesday at noon and 6 p.m. We invite you to come be a part of this Bible study. Uh, come share with us as we study God's Word and grow in God's Word together. Uh, because as I've shared many times before, uh, worship is great, but true growth takes place through Bible study. So come. Let's study God's word together in the, the uh, telephone numbers on your screen as well. Call in. We'd love to have you be a part of our Bible study group. Uh, also, if you desire to give, we invite you to do so. You have three ways that you can give. You can give through, or actually four ways. You can give through GiveLify. If you go to GiveLify and search Flat Rock AME Church, Abbeville, South Carolina, you can give your tithes and offerings electronically. Also, you can give through our Flat Rock AME Church's Facebook page. We invite you to do that as well. Uh, then also, if you desire, you can drop your tithes off. Someone will be here at the church this morning from 10.30 a.m. until 12 noon. Uh, so you can, if you desire, you can come and personally drop off your tithes and offerings. As a matter of fact, you, can, you, don't, you, only, you don't have to get out of your car. You can just drive up and uh, drop your tithes and offerings in the box. Also, uh, fourthly, if you desire to mail your tithes and offerings, you, you can do so by using the address on your screen, our P.O. Box. We invite you to mail. So you have four ways to give, but give as God has blessed you to give. And the Bible is still clear when it says to give and it shall be given unto you good measure. Press down, shaken together and running over. We invite you to trust God with your gifts. Trust him with your time, trust him with your talent, but also trust him with your treasure. We pray that you have a blessed week. We pray that God watches over us all and keeps us safe and in his care. So this time, let us receive the benediction. And now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be our glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. Have a blessed week, everyone.